So we're here with uh, Julian J. Rock Williams. Uh, what is this, uh, day two out here in the uh, little mini yep, camp? I got, I got here Sunday. I've worked out Monday. So it's, my second, it's my second workout today. Uh, how many mini camps have you done out here? How many fights? Uh, this would be, my, I think, my third or fourth. I think I want to say third. You feel a difference in, in terms of like the first time you came out, now you're more in a yep. routine? There's not so much feel the difference. It's, they got all my times and everything like that written down. And everything has, has, has uh, gotten better and better every time. So. I'm just uh, I'm just soaking it all in, soaking it all in, and, uh, getting better, man. You're still trying to find your ceiling, right? I keep hearing them like we can't get this guy to 80. percent I know like, it's crazy, it's crazy. Every time I come out here, man, it's just like it's getting better and better, and they're trying to find like it's a little bit different because I don't know, man. It's, it's so much like scientific stuff that go into. I don't really fully grasp everything, but they tell you I'm getting better, so I take it all in. Yeah, yeah, you kind of follow the numbers a bit, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. Um, Talk about you know I think the last time we were here you were fighting the Southpaw, uh, mm -hmm. last time I, last time we yep. talked. Yep. Uh, talk about that fight. You guys went the distance, but it was a dominant, brutal win. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about that fight. What you learned? I learned how to be patient, you know, because the guy he didn't really want to engage too much, so I had to kind of like trap him down, cut him off, and just be patient and pick my spots and you know so. And I learned how to pace myself a little bit more because actually it was my first time I actually completed ten rounds. So, uh, is that right? Yes, yes. I mean, I, I, How I did that feel? It was good. It was. I felt really good at the end, you know. And uh, I was really happy I came out here because it gave me a lot of confidence, you know, uh, going the distance if I had to. So I felt myself in the eighth and eighth round just getting stronger and stronger. And I think a lot of that is credit to me coming out here and putting the work out here. Do you think you you had energy to spare at the end that maybe you could have gone after him to get him out of there? Uh, yes. You know what though? But it's hard to knock out a guy who is trying to survive. Right. You know I mean, so if, 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 if it's, it's a little bit easier to try to get a guy who's coming to win, who's coming to fight, first to a guy who's trying to survive, you know. So yeah. I tried my best. I knocked him down. I actually think I could have got him out of there if I would have did a little bit more with my with, with me and my corner was practicing on in the gym. But that's what the fights are for, you know. I, it's yeah. All, it's all a learning experience, and uh, I got as much as possible I could out of it, and uh, I'm just looking to move forward. These are kind of rounds that, that'll come back to you in some other fight, mm -hmm. deep in a fight, and, and you'll remember things yeah, that you learned. Like, oh, I remember what happened in this fight. I remember what happened in that fight. I can, yeah. It all comes together sometimes in, 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 uh, in the tougher fights, the fights that you went through in the past. I was watching uh, you know, Tony Harrison versus Willie Nelson, which is a, you know, a fight in your division. Mm -hmm. And the, dif the difference, I mean, I asked Willie this heading into the fight, because he was trying new stuff in terms of training. What was experience? Experience. Tony Harrison had nothing to draw back on. No. But no disrespect to Tony Harrison. He showed much more than I thought he had. But his his his, his competition level was so weak coming up. We don't know. He, I think he had a bit of a false sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. Everybody was picking uh, Tony Harrison to beat him. Like man, Tony Harrison. I mean, excuse me, Willie Nelson has been in there very very tough. He had yeah. to fight Udell Johnson. He fought Vanes. Vanes. He fought the guy I'm about to fight, Luciano Coelho. Yeah, he's been in a very, very tough. He got a lot, a lot to draw back on. Versus to a guy, he's 25. I know that all these glossy knockouts. He's hitting guys one time and they're falling down, but he's not hitting anyone. You know what I mean? Gives a guy, gives him a, a bit of a false sense of confidence. Nobody's and hitting him back. Nobody's hitting him back, and he got a press in the fight, which a fight where he was winning hands down. Uh, Tony Harrison was winning the fight. Yeah, but it just seemed like to me the walls was closing in on him, and well, he couldn't take the pressure. Yeah, and that, and he has nothing to draw back on because he's never fought anybody. So. That's yeah. just the story of the fight. How can you have more answers if you haven't really been asked many questions? That's, that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. You can't. And I thought, you know, watching it, you know, it was it was a tighter fight than I thought. He was winning the boxing match. I, wrote, I, thought, I thought Tony Harrison was definitely winning. I was actually impressed. I watched it. I'm like, wow, this guy is better than what I thought he was. Yeah, he had some depth there. Mm -hmm. But then we get into the late rounds, and you could see, I think some of it was the Willie's, the hypoxic training that he's doing here. Willie Nelson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I always thought Willie Nelson had a good gas tank anyway. And for him to come out here and just add on to it, I know what this stuff do to you out here. So yeah, that was, that was another reason why I picked Willie Nelson. If, if, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I've been saying Willie Nelson was going to beat Tony Harrison when the fight, when the fight got signed. And uh, it just added more to what I thought. Being as though I found that he was out here, so he's definitely going to beat him now. Yeah, he just had a whole, uh, uh, Mike, uh, they, they described it as like a winning aura around him. You know, like heading into the, that week, he mm -hmm. just felt like he was going to win. I think you guys get a little bit of that hanging out with Victor, hanging out with all these guys who are really positive and, and they're definitely. all about just 
like you know, it's kind of like pimp my ride, you know, but right, it's like right, a fighter right, version, right. you know. I um, we always keep a, a, a positive crew around us wherever we go, mm -hmm. but this just that def it definitely adds to it, you know, with Victor and Basil and Brian and, and mm -hmm. you coming out here with the positive energy and stuff like that. It's always a great thing. Uh, let's talk about the fight after, uh, you know, after Joey Hernandez. It was Armin Obsepian. I, I watched the fight. Uh, talk about what you thought about that, because you went back to your stoppage ways, mm -hmm. uh, just going out there and brutalizing the guy. Mm -hmm. But you're not, to me, you're not like super flashy knockout guy. You well, break guys yeah. down and, and beat them down. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that fight. What'd you learn? Uh, I learned he had a hard hit. That's the first thing I learned. But uh, he was a very tough guy, you know. I actually thought he was gonna be a little bit more trickier than he was. I seen him on tape, uh, and he had a, he had a, I seen a couple of, early, uh, of his early fights. Like he fought uh, Ricardo Williams. He fought him really, really well. Yeah, like yeah. He possibly could have won. Um, so I thought he was gonna be much trickier and much faster than what he was. But nevertheless, I think it was a, I think it was a lot that I did to him. My range, you know, my jab. I used my jab. And yeah. I went to his body real early, and I end up and I and, and and I was fortunate enough to hurt him real early to put him on the defense. So uh, I just think uh, I did what I had to do. You know, he wasn't a world beater, you know. But I think when I get those kind of guys, some guys struggle with those kind of guys. I yeah. do what I'm supposed to do with them, and that's beat them down, outclass them, and knock them out. And that's exactly what I did. You and Stephen were talking, uh, Stephen Edwards, your trainer, um, about finishing uh, mm -hmm. a little while ago while you were training in mm -hmm. SmackDown. Is that something you're focusing in on now? Definitely, or? definitely. Because I don't think it's a, it's not a coincidence that I've hurt everybody. And every fight, I knock them down and hurt them. I buzz them real bad. And the majority of the times, it comes early. Yeah. You know? So I think uh, I have to become a better finisher. I could, what I got, 12 knockouts? I probably should have about 15 or 16, you know? Yeah. But I'm definitely working on being a better, better finisher. That's why you always tagging. If you guys follow me on Facebook, he's always tagging me with Ray Leonard t uh, tapes and <laughs> highlight reels. Because he always say Ray Leonard is the best finisher since Joe Lewis. Hmm. So, uh we definitely do a lot of study in the old fires and old tapes and stuff like that. And it's helped, it's helped my game, game a lot. What, what do you think it is? Uh, what makes a great finisher? Somebody who can get their hands off and, and, and be super accurate when a guy's hurt and not allow himself to be held. It's it also about kind of keeping that right range. I guess that goes definitely, into the category of, of not being held. I think more importantly is getting your hands off and not being held because the first thing you talk when, when you're hurt is grab on, grab on, hold on, and get a couple seconds. You know, so uh, I think more importantly is not being held and being able to get your hands off and be accurate. Because yeah. most guys can get their hands off and they just hit anything. I, I, I want to be able to hit. I'm already an accurate puncher anyway, but I want to be able to get my hands off a little bit more and be a little more accurate and still be defensively minded. Defensive minded because a lot of guys get clipped while they're going for the kill. Like, for example, Dale Jacobs last week. Yeah, he was going in for the kill, and boom, he almost got knocked out himself. <clears throat> he went, he went in crazy sloppy too. Yeah, no jab, yeah, wide yeah, open, yeah. switching wide stances. Open. Yep, I think, uh, and I think Daniel Jacobs is a good fighter. He fought, a, he had a spectacular performance, but I just think that 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 almost cost him the fight because he was really hurt. And yeah. Moore's not a puncher, you know? right? So that just goes to show you how uh, defensive minded that you got, you have to be when you're going to go finish. You think that that he got hurt because he didn't see the punch? Oh, uh, he was he, a little bit over anxious. He was in his hometown. Yeah. He got him hurt early. Anytime you get a guy hurt, hurt early, man, any fighter, you kind of like get excited. Like, oh, my God, I got a chance to get a, a, a short night and a big check. There's nothing better. Right, right. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think he just got a little bit over anxious and got caught. But it's all a learning experience. I'm pretty sure that guy's still learning, too. Just like I can look at his fight and learn. It's like I know not to do that. You know what I mean? So You can see him between rounds smiling, too. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 I know what yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, he, put a good, he, he had a good performance. I was What's impressed. That? I was there, actually. Yeah. He, he, oh, yeah. Yeah, I went out. He had a good, he had a good fight. You know, uh, I think the first time, or the last time we, we did an interview, we talked about the PBC, and it was just barely getting going. Mm -hmm. um, now you've had a chance to experience it, uh, be a part of it, and kind of watch it. You know, I know there's a lot of derision about it. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, it's, I still think it's too early to tell. It's going to go all the way at least through 2016. What do you think about it? I don't think it's too early to tell because it's free. If I walk in here right now and I say, oh, I'm giving free anything out outside, everybody's going to come out and see what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just think just the fact that it has the, the free aspect to it is going to draw fans. Mm -hmm. If you put anything on TV, people are going to watch. And sure. in this case, it's world-class fighters fighting each other uh, on different networks. So I think it's going to do I think it's going to do great. I think it has done great. And I think that uh, it's, it's a little bit aggravating that 
the the view the, the, the views that it get is always under microscope. Like every fight is not going to be two million viewers. You know what right, I mean? Right. It's just not going to happen because some of the networks that is on it is bigger than others. Like NBC is bigger than Bounce. Right. So we can't expect two million viewers on Bounce as of right now because it's the beginning. You know right. I mean? Right. So, but I think uh, I think a lot of people wanted to want the whole thing to tank. But I think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to like change the face of boxing because. Look what Tyrank is doing. Tyrank went and got True TV. Right. So they obviously know that this is this is the direction boxing is going in. So they're trying to compete. Yeah. Which is the, which is what they're supposed to do. They got to compete. You know what I mean? So uh, platforms are changing. I mean, the platform is changing. You got it. It's just everything changes every couple of years. You know what I mean? Nothing yeah. stays the same. So I think uh, Al Haney has changed the game and he's doing a great job. You know, uh, he's added one thing. You guys are getting paid a lot better. Which I think is great, you know. Like uh, that's one thing I don't argue with. Yeah. Um, you guys are doing the drug testing, which I don't know. That may be another video. You mm -hmm. know, uh, some guys are getting drug tested. Some guys say they aren't. Uh, it's kind of up and down. But maybe that's the nature of a of right. a of a year round program right. where you're kind of worried about getting I think tested. Everything is a little bit choppy in the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he's got what over th 200 fighters or something he's, like that. Yeah. Everything is a little bit choppy in the beginning. I think they want to get the drug testing thing down. And as soon as possible, I believe so. Let me ask you this. I guess where I'm headed is, do you think next year, or even in the back end of this year, we're going to start seeing tougher fights? Like right now it feels like there's a lot of names on the card versus a, guy, a lot of guys that are maybe second tier. Okay. Do you think, think next year it's going to be name versus name? I think he already has done a lot of names versus names. He did Keith Thurman versus Rebel Guerrero. Right. That was a good Peterson. one. Versus Danny Garcia. There's another he good one. Did Adrian Brunner versus Sean Porter. Yeah. I just named what was that four? I just named. Yeah. Three or three, four. I just three. Named. That's all great fights. People want name versus name every time out. Boston don't work like that. You can't get a super fight every time out. Yeah. You know what I mean, I mean, it just don't work like that. It's not gonna happen that way. You gotta save a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't have Godzilla fighting Godzilla each time out. Let me ask you a question. Do HBO do that? No. Kobe left just for who? I don't remember the guy's name. Yeah, Najid Mohammadi. But he was a he was a mandatory. I mean, yeah, that happens. But, yeah, but you, you know, gotta keep the belts. You know. But uh, okay, who did Pascal just fight? Yeah. The guy can fight, and I felt bad for because he wanted yeah, to fight. Yeah. But nobody know who he is. No. He's considered a no name. But yeah. He can fight. Just because a guy don't have a name, I mean, you can't fight. That's We've seen thing. actually that a, a bit in the PBC. Where With guys, Frampton, the guy at Frampton for the, the, the Mexican kid. That kid could He's fight. Supposedly no name, just because the guy. Everybody was a no name at one point. Well, the guy that Guerrero fought too, uh, Martinez. They gave him a fight. No, I just think he fought over his head. I think I think Guerrero's on the, on the downside. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, he had a good career. He had a long career. But I think now he's on the downside. A lot of miles. A lot of miles. A lot of miles. Uh, Keith Thurman took it out of him. That was a, a ferocious beat then. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Let's talk about your guy, uh, Luciano Cuello. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about him? What do you know about him? Well, I think he's a solid, solid, solid veteran. A lot of people get into, oh, just because I don't know a guy, he can't fight. Right. I heard a lot of people say, oh, this is a walk in the park. Oh, this is... This is 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 barely a step up. Uh, William Shabriz right through him in three rounds. That's that's BS. This guy he's only been stopped one time. He probably beat Chavez. He could have got a draw with Willie Nelson. Mm -hmm. And Canelo is Canelo. You know? Yeah. And Canelo did what he's supposed to do with him. Yes, they also fought like one at 150 pounds. That no might have had something it. to do with it. No doubt about it. And how about this? He could be 37 and one because if you watch the Chavez fight, I thought he beat Chavez. Yeah. And. The Willie Nelson fight could have been a drawish kind of fight, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he could be, he could possibly be thirty-seven and one or something, somewhere around there. But nevertheless, he's thirty-five and three. He's super solid. He 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 only been stopped one time, and I believe he's coming to fight. So I don't take nobody lightly. And that was quite a while ago. It was like two thousand and thirteen. Quite a while ago, so you know. You think he's gonna have some questions for you that that, uh, not that you're not gonna have the answers for, but that maybe you haven't been asked before? No. All right. No. You expect a knockout? I expect a win. All right. 